Jazz is one of the biggest reasons that people take up saxophone, but there's a huge problem. And that is that 99% of people, their phrasing just sounds bad when they play jazz. Now, why is that? I'll tell you exactly why that is. Because when you buy your book of jazz transcriptions, it's going to look like this. And the information which is missing, which is going to help you sound like your favourite records, would make the transcription look like this. That is all the missing information that you're not seeing on the page. And that's the biggest reason why you're not sounding good when you phrase jazz. So on today's free online saxophone lesson, we're going to do something about that. We're going to take two segments of really great jazz phrasing, one from Sonny Rollins, one from John Coltrane, and I'm going to forensically break down exactly what happens with the tonguing, with the slurring, everything, all the little details which you've probably never thought of. And you're going to learn about a technique called half tonguing, which you might never even have heard of, which is going to transform your jazz playing. Now, I've put together a cool PDF with both excerpts and they're fully marked up. So go and grab your free PDF using the link that you can see down there or click the link in the description. And without further ado, let's dive into our first musical example, which is a track called Toot Toot Tootsie by the one and only Sonny Rollins from his The Sound of Sonny album. And we're going to pick it apart and you're going to learn how to phrase jazz properly. Let's hear the man himself play at full battle speed and then we're going to break it down into manageable, we're going to break it down into manageable chunks for you. Okay, so there is a lot happening and it all happens very quickly. So first thing I'm going to do, we're going to slow it right down and listen in slow motion and then I'm going to break down this phrasing for you. Here we go. Okay, cool. So, first two notes using my shorthand, ST is staccato tongue. So, the first two notes are staccato tongue, which is unusual for jazz because you don't normally play staccato eighth notes. So, to begin with, then we come into the first note, which is a tongued A. And immediately after that, we're into our first half tongue. Now, Half tonguing is where you can do it one of two ways. You can either just close off one half of the reed with your tongue by putting your tongue, you know, some people prefer to take to the left side like me, other people prefer the right hand side of the reed, but you literally just close off that side of the reed with your tongue. Or the second way you can half tongue is by using your whole tongue, but just putting it lightly on the reed to muffle it enough that uh, the sound has changed, but uh, it doesn't stop the reed vibrating. So when you half tongue, it sounds a bit like this. I'll do it on an E. Now, because you've already got your tongue held on the reed for that half tongued note, when you uh, release your tongue from the reed, it's kind of like tonguing the note. It's like a sort of de facto half tongue, which is why it's called half tonguing. So when you see HT on the chart here, um, here for example, it's always followed by an RT, and that's when you release your tongue. So remember for half tongue, you're holding your tongue on the reed for that note. RT is when you release your tongue. So first of all, we've got our first, um, our first example of half tonguing here in the very first bar. Now I've marked it, it's marked many ways, but for, for today's lesson, I've marked a half tongued note in brackets with a cross. So let's play the first bar very slowly. So you can see that I'm tonguing this note, this note, this note, I'm half tonguing the next note, release tonguing, which kind of tongues the next note, half tonguing the next note. And actually there's a little bit of a mistake there in the music that should be RT instead of just T. 
And then we slur all the way, then we tongue that one, and we staccato tongue the last one. So I'll do that one more time in slow motion. So you can see the sort of forensic detail and the speed that we have to work on this to really get the jazz phrasing dialed in. I'll do it a little bit quicker for you. Let's hear Sunny play it again slowly. Okay, now this is what it sounds like at full speed. <laughs> So you can see why you have to practice it slowly, because at full battle speed is pretty quick. Which is why you can't go straight in and expect to play it that fast. Right, let's move on to the next phrase now. And actually the next phrase takes up the whole the whole rest of the segment. It's a really long phrase, but first of all, we've got a tongued note. Then we've got we've got a tongued note here, then you've got a staccato tongued. All these are really short notes staccato tongue tick, tick, and you can hear he really plays them short when you when you when we're gonna check it out in a minute then there's this scoop up to the b so what you're gonna do is you're gonna play a little b flat grace grace note and you're gonna smudge the gap between the two notes so instead of going you're going to go That's what Sonny does. Let's check him out. You can see the little the little quick scoop into that B. And then we're going to tongue the G sharp. We're going to tongue the E, which slurs into the next note. Then we're going to tongue the G sharp, which slurs down to an E. Now this time it's ghosted, but it's not half tongued. It's just a very quiet note down there. So it's much quieter than the other notes. In contrast, you've got an accent as you jump up to that accented G. And this little wiggle here means that we've got some vibrato on that note. This is the first note that we've got vibrato on. Then moving on, you're going to tongue the F. You're going to tongue the C, which slurs to the A. And then we've got another half tongue with, obviously, following it, the release tongue. And then straight into another half tongue passage. Now, the interesting thing about this section here, where we've got the half tongue, is there's two half tongue notes in a row. Because once you've got your reed in kind of muffle, once you've got your tongue in uh, reed muffling mode, you can play several notes in a row. And uh, we're going to see that later in the Coltrane version, but this also happens in this Sonny Rollins example. So two notes in a row are going to be half tongued until you release your tongue here that could that could also be you know release tongue but i should have probably written release tongue but it's an accented note so as you release your tongue you have to kind of release it hard <laughs> and give it a bit more beans to get the accent um and then back to another half tongue note and then again a release accent note a simple tongue note with a slur here you're going to tongue this one now you know when you when you study jazz articulation, everybody says uh, you need to tongue from the offbeat to the onbeat. Well, here's quite a rare example of this actually happening. So you're tonguing here from the offbeat to the onbeat, here from the offbeat to the onbeat, here from offbeat to the onbeat. Um, but this doesn't generally happen as much as you might imagine. So that's the interesting thing that you get taught about jazz phrasing. You also get taught that all your um, eighth note quavers swing, and normally they don't, they're quite straight. It's the way that you phrase everything and the way you tongue it, which gives it the swing, especially at faster tempos like this. So moving on through the phrase, and I will demonstrate all this nice and slowly, don't you worry. We've got an attack tongue note, and then the pattern breaks here because we slur on the beat to the offbeat this time. We've got another couple of half-tongued notes in a row before you release your tongue for the B. And then half-tongue, release, half-tongue, release, half-tongue, release. Tongue that one, which is slurred over like the like the uh, the rule should be. <laughs> tongued note there. And then two more half-tongue notes in a row before finishing on this G 
with the vibrato. So there's two notes in this passage which have got vibrato, okay? Now then, let me just rub out all these scratchings because it's actually confusing enough as it is <laughs> without having a load of stuff everywhere. And I'll break this down very slowly from here, okay? I'm going to play it nice and slowly so you can hear each articulation. And I've noticed there's another little mistake there in the chart because this one should also be a release tongue. Sorry about that. I'll make sure I correct it for the PDF, which you can get using the link there. Don't forget to get your PDF. Right. Let's hear Sonny Rollins play this, but we're going to slow it right down to 60%. So you've got a fighting chance of hearing the articulation. So we're going to play from the same place. We're going to play from here and just follow the articulation and listen to Sonny Rollins do it. Okay, I'll now play it for you one more time, a little bit faster from the same place, the bracket there. Okay, great. We're starting to get somewhere now. It's starting to sound like jazz. Let's play it a little bit faster. And now let's hear Sonny play the whole thing at full speed. And uh, this is where the rubber really hits the road. You're going to have to work up to this. <laughs> So you can tell there's a lot of detail in there if you're going to play it like Sonny Rollins. And the standard way that you would phrase jazz, if you just saw it in a transcription, is basically non-existent. Nobody is going to give you this level of detail, but this is the detail that really makes it swing and which is really going to make you sound authentic. So I'm glad I'm teaching this stuff because many times you're not going to hear this level of detail, but it's the details that make all the difference when it comes to phrasing. Hey, I should say at this point, all this stuff is going to be in my new course called Phrase Like a Pro. I'm working on it right now. In a few months, it's definitely going to be out. So make sure you stay tuned on this channel because if you like what you're seeing today, this is a merest snippet, the merest snippet of what you're going to get in Phrase Like a Pro. All right, let's now move on to the second music example, which is the one and only John called Train. And it's from his album called Train Plays the Blues. The track is called Blues to You. We're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to delve in, find out exactly what articulation and what phrasing is happening in this example so that you can start to learn how to phrase jazz. <laughs> First of all, let's listen to Coltrane play it at full clip. All right, let's now listen to it one more time quite slowly so you can start to pick out some of the details that you can see there in the phrasing. Here we go. Then we'll break it down note by note. A bit there. Okay, let's start breaking it down note by note. So, first of all, we're going to hit this accent with an attack tongued note. That's what AT means, attack tongue. 
ba, and then straight in with a half tongue. Ba, and there into the release tongue, tongued note, and then we got two half tongue notes in a row. Now, I've mixed up my terminology here because you're going to release your tongue and you're going to staccato. You're going to slur staccato, if you like. Uh, normally when I say SS, it's a, it's a slur staccato, which means you slur into the note, but as soon as you hit the note, you cut it dead. Now, in this case, you're releasing your tongue, which is kind of like the almost like the slur portion of it. So as soon as you release your tongue and the, and the note starts, bang, you cut it dead with your tongue to get this short note. So this is what happens when you have a short note following a half tongue. So let me play this first phrase for you very slowly so that you can hear the articulation played in meticulous detail. I'll play it a little bit quicker. Now let's hear Coltrane play it. Always compare it to the original. Okay, now let's hear him play it at full speed. <laughs> okay, let's now move on to the next little mini phrase. So we've got a bit of vibrato kind of at the end of the C. And then just a simple tongued A and then a tongued F. Now, you heard me waffling on a minute ago about a slur staccato. Here's a good example of a slur staccato. You're going to tongue the F, you slur into the E flat, and then you cut the note dead. As opposed to... So let's put together the first two phrases. Okay, let's hear John Coltrane play it. <laughs> As usual, it flies by. Now, onto the next section, we've got this gliss from the C up to the E. And then back down to the C. And then we go into, but you're only gonna tongue the first note of that passage, it's all slurred. And then we're into this, this, uh, this series of regulation articulation where we go, from offbeat to onbeat until the pattern is broken by this long string of uh, tongued notes in a row. Now it's worth saying that when I say tongued notes and the, the note is marked with a tenuto, you're gonna join all the notes together, but they're all articulated. So make sure you don't have any fresh air when you have a legato tongued note. <laughs> So when I say legato tongued, it just means the notes are all gonna join up like this. Instead of. Jazz is a legato connected style. So you don't want to have choppiness between your eighth notes, between your quavers, because it's just gonna make it sound really bad and really rinky tinky. And remember, we're trying to emulate exactly what these people are doing to emulate the style. Let's play this phrase nice and slowly for you. Now, you'll notice on this bit here that there's actually a fall off from that B flat because it goes ba -da -da -de 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 and then straight that bend goes straight into the next half tongue to note. These are the little details that you really need to that you really need to catch. And it all happens quite fast. So let me play that passage again. We're going from here and I'll play it a little bit quicker this time. Now let's hear John Coltrane play it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> right, as I'm laughing because it all happens so quickly, doesn't it? But that that is the detail that's in there. Right, let's now move on to the next section. So, this is a relatively simple section. You're just going to tongue the G, tongue the E, slur to the F, tongue the D, slur to the E. And then we've got this half-tongued C, which releases into the C sharp. And then from here, we've got this long section of half-tongue notes. One, two, three, four half-tongue notes in a row. It almost sounds like he's not playing there. You've got the A, B, C, and D all half-tongued. Then you release your tongue. We've got the standard, standard issue alternate tonguing there. A half tongue here on the G flat, going into the release tongue, slurred into the G, and then that little grace note. Watch out for that little grace note in there, the D sharp to the E. And then you slur the last two notes. So let's hear this final phrase in real slow mo. And actually, I added vibrato at the end, but it's not there. So <laughs> that was cheeky. Okay, a little bit quicker, same thing. Little bit quicker. Now let's hear Coltrane play it. Let's hear him play that a bit slower so you can really hear it. And you can really hear him dragging those those half those half tongue notes through this section here. It really sort of muffles the sound until it's released here. It's got a really distinctive kind of strained sound to it. Okay, let's now hear the whole thing at full speed and then I'll try and play it myself, okay. <laughs> Okay, so. The variables that you're looking for in your articulation are, is it tongued? The basics are, is it tongued or is it slurred? Now, after that, you're looking for, is it half-tongued, and where does the tongue release after that half-tongue? And you can tell a half-tongue because the note is quieter and more muffled than the others. And then, after that, you're looking for accents, you're listening for the vibrato, you're listening to which notes are staccato and short, and which notes are played long and connected. Are there any grace notes? Are there any bends? Are there any bends down? Are there any scoops? Are there any glissandos? All that thing build up the full picture. And next time that you do a transcription, you can mark it all in and really start to get a jazz feel because all this stuff is what really makes jazz sound like jazz and none of it practically is gonna be on the transcriptions that you can buy in the shops or that you might have worked on. So you know the old expression, give a person a fish and they'll eat for a day, teach a person to fish and they'll be able to eat for a lifetime. Well, that's what this is all about today. I have given you a fish, <laughs> I've given you two fish, I've given you a sunny fish and a Coltrane fish, but now it's time for you to learn how to fish and go and catch your own phrasing. <laughs> so what you need to do now to take this to the next level is to slow down and start listening to all your favourite jazz recordings or transcriptions you've got and start marking in everything that we've talked about today. Once you've done this process of working out the articulation, the exact phrasing for yourself, start to build it up just like I've showed you today in really slow motion and that way 
Bit by bit, you're going to learn how to phrase jazz properly. It's going to be a game changer. So good luck with the process and let me know how you get on in the comments. That's all we've got time for this week. I really hope you've enjoyed this lesson as we delve into the murky world of jazz phrasing and get you sounding like a real pro when you play jazz. Don't forget to go and get your free PDF um, that you can see the link there or you can click the link in the description. As always, you can get my free Saxophone Success Masterclass anytime you want. That's got a bunch of awesome stuff in it, so I'd highly recommend it. There is also the opportunity for you, anytime you want, to step inside the Inner Circle membership for seven days, absolutely free. Check it all out. There is some unbelievable stuff in there, including a bonus video where I show you, uh, a bonus video for this, <laughs> for this week, where I show you how to work out the phrasing for a solo that you've already got written down. I'm going to show you how to do it live inside the inner circle. So go and check out the link that you can see there to join up. It's a seven day free trial, no harm, no foul. What have you got to lose? Nothing. So go and check it out. And as usual, if you bought me a coffee, thanks very much. This is such a waffly outro. Come on, get out of here. Uh, until next week, practice hard, practice smart, enjoy your music, bye. Down the phrasing for you. I'm gonna sneeze. Oh. <laughs> Oh my god. We are gonna make that right. I'm gonna sneeze again. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs>